Welcome to our 26th episode of our Sales Mastery. And uh, I would like to welcome each one of you for this uh, very special talk show, which we are having today. Uh, what makes this very, very special is mainly because uh, this is on a topic which is very, very close to our heart. And I, for one, believe that uh, this particular topic which we are going to talk today, which is being resourceful in the VUCA world, is very much relevant today, especially when the entire world is going through a lot of challenges. And uh, friend, I'm so happy that uh, today our guest is somebody whom I really love from the bottom of my heart. And what makes this person so very special is uh, because he has a passion for what this particular talk show represents. I and he together, we have a passion for sales. And both of us have this conviction that sales is one of the most important business skill. Sales or selling is the most important personal skill. And each and every human being, if you want to really consummate this beautiful gift of human life, which has been given to us, we need to consciously learn, understand, and master the science and the art of selling. And uh, friends, today's guest is really deeply uh, entrenched himself. It's a, he's like a foot soldier. And from that particular position, he has today groomed himself, evolved himself as one of the leading market, market and business strategists. And I would be giving you a very short introduction of uh, today's guest. And I would, uh, I'm sure by the time I. Business transformational strategies and is a certified strategic leadership and executive coach from the International Coaching Federation. He has over 18 plus years of experience in managing change and transforming businesses to higher levels of growth. He holds a vast experience in sales, marketing, and strategy. If I had to put a number to the entire introduction of this powerful gentleman, he has trained over 3,586 entrepreneurs he has trained. He has consulted nearly about 218 organizations. He has submitted around 14 research papers. And uh, he has done almost 358 business mentoring. And uh, as also, which is very in line with his uh, life's mission and uh, vision, uh, 65 startups he has been mentoring and many more to come. Friends, it's my honor and pleasure to uh, welcome my very close friend, my associate, and uh, somebody whom I really love from the bottom of my heart, uh, Mr. Prashant Ayer. Can you put a big round of applause to him? Welcome, Prashant. Welcome. Thank you, uh, sir. It's honor and pleasure to invite you for this start, start, uh, sh uh, must, uh, uh, sales mastery talk show. And uh, as I rightly said, in this talk show, we have been consciously getting uh, individuals who have... Uh, really mastered their particular craft. And we have uh, consciously had people from various different disciplines. And in all of them, we have found a passion for making a difference. We have also found in them one commonality is they all have uh, a deep entrenched pursuit for excellence. And they are action-oriented people. And they have achieved significant uh, successes, both in their personal and their professional life. So I think you fit this particular profile uh, to the T. So welcome to the uh, Sales Mastery talk show. And uh, as we agreed that uh, the topic we are going to discuss today is on being resourceful in this VUCA world. So Prashant, welcome. I would like you to have an introductory a uh, few sentences for those people who will be observing us, who will be watching us, are already watching us live on the Facebook and would be definitely going through this in our YouTube channel. 
And as I said, one of the objective of this particular talk show, Prashant, is to uh, really motivate, inspire the young young youth and young generation of India, uh, who would we would actually want them to master this craft of selling, but also develop themselves into dynamic entrepreneurs. Because I, for one, believe that if we have to make our country back as the Sony Kichidi of the world, what we require is dynamic, thriving entrepreneurs. And I'm I, I know from I know. For sure, uh, having met you, known you, close close quarters, you also have a similar passion. So your introductory remark. Thank you, sir. Uh, so first of all, salutations to my parents, my gurus, my teachers and mentors who have blessed me enough uh, to be there sharing a stage with you. And uh, speaking about sales and the VUCA world, uh, you know, when I was looking at this topic, the first salesperson, if I may say, uh, where we were introduced to this concept of sales was from our very own mother. You know, yes. during our childhood, uh, she would tell us to eat vegetables uh, to ensure that your brains grow bigger. Uh, she'll ask you to eat those medicines, saying that it is not medicine, it's actually gems. And, you know, the entire selling skills is you know, groomed at a much younger age by the time when we start growing. And I think sales is very ingrained and very I'm very passionate about it because I'm not in this profession by chance, but by choice. I strongly believe that uh, without sales, this world cannot coexist. Uh, you know, marketing, you know, it's a glamorous world. They, they are being recognized for all the marketing campaigns. But at the end of the day, all the leads are being converted by the salespeople. And for me, I feel that a lot of people do not find pride in being a salesperson. I always feel that being in sales is the most beautiful uh, role you could play because you play a role of a growth creator. Uh, your leaders are dependent on your revenue forecast, on your revenue growth. And this becomes a very important dynamics in the entire organization's fulcrum. Absolutely. Yes, point on. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Prashant, you said it very beautifully. Today, income is equal to business and sales is what gets you the income. So if there is no sales, no income, no business. So as you rightly said, this is one of the revenue generating uh, functions of business which needs to be given adequate importance. And it has been found that companies which will flourish are the companies who have a very dynamic, very uh, art-toned sales processes and systems. And they have a culture of being customer-centric or sales-centric. Very well said. Um, uh, but then coming down to the, the, the topic which we, are, uh, which we have planned to discuss today and which I feel is very much relevant to today's uh, environment, is about resourcefulness. I for one believe that human beings are no longer called a resource. Human beings are called as human possibilities. And you would appreciate uh, one thing that uh, fine tuning this to the topic we are dis discussing. Resources are limited, but resourcefulness is infinite. So I know you as a very resourceful guy. And all the numbers which I just uh, introduced you with shows you that you have been a highly resourceful guy. So as a person known to be resourceful, I would like to have your opinion as to what do you attribute your skill of resourcefulness and how you developed it? I think, uh, you know, being resourceful in today's VUCA world is very essential. Uh, we all do not have all the resources as rightly put by you. But definitely, if you are able to connect the dots and be the light uh, and spread the light and remove the darkness. I think this is the way the game is going to change. And very importantly, understanding of how do we shift the entire fulcrum? What do we do in a different form? How do we connect uh, people to become better? And that essentially is the most important factor because uh, if we can't help another human being with whatever little we have, we may not have everything, but whatever little we have, if you have got the mind to share, I think that is going to be determined as a very agile leader in today's VUCA times. Very well said, absolutely. In fact, today, world over, you know, our rich an organization is how much of uh, cash flow or cash cash reserves they have got. Everybody today uh, is focusing on resourcefulness. And as you at least said, resourcefulness is uh, that particular ability or a skill which any human being can uh, develop if you can pursue excellence or all the three attributes of being effective, efficient, and excellent. In fact, as we all know, uh, effectiveness is doing the right things. 
efficiency is doing the right things uh, with zero defect and excellence is doing the right things better and better. So I wanted to learn from you, Prashant, ki you rightly pointed out that uh, selling is one of the most important personal skill and most important business skill. And selling uh, in its uh, broader genre comes down to influencing, persuading, and convincing another human being of your thoughts and uh, your preferences. So I wanted uh, your take on this. Ki how important is the skill of influencing, persuasing, convincing, or selling your uh, selling in the modern era? Uh, I think since a childhood, uh, sales actually comes naturally to every human being. If you look at, you know, uh, let's say in class six, seven, when we have not scored marks and you're being spanked badly for getting low marks and you go and, you know, give a sales pitch to your parents saying that, no, look at the next exam. I will work hard. I will come back. Uh, so again, you're trying to persuade and escape that particular scenario, which you're being interested to. And as you... the decision maker understand of why it is an informed choice uh, to give you an example in today's time why selling is more important let's say when you work with complex projects you have to convince your leader about the vision which you have about a certain task now when i'm setting up an accelerator i'm setting up a startup accelerator at the university it is very important for me to understand the founder's vision and also give him a viewpoint of how we can set things up in a different form uh, to ensure that the outcomes are coming out in a best fashion uh, you may do things a lot of times in process, but if your outcomes are not getting delivered, whatever efforts you have taken, you are never rewarded for your efforts. So it's very important to understand and you know give the right balance to ensure that you get the right resources back to execute the project. So pursuing and influencing your leaders is very important. And that is one key skill one cannot avoid at any uh, point of time. Absolutely. In fact, uh, as you rightly said, that... Uh, uh, influencing and uh, selling, you start learning right from your young age, right from your childhood, right from the time, you know, as you rightly said, the mothers are the best influencers and persuaders and sellers of their ideas. Uh, very, very, very well said, uh, Prashant. And this is exactly what uh, everybody needs to understand that uh, selling, unfortunately, is a very invalidated wo word. And many people, because of those invalidation, do not really go deep into studying the science and the art of selling and thereby i for one believe that they pay a very high price in terms of their uh, growth in the both the personal and professional life okay now in my books the sales mastery 21 key principles to win the game of life on selling that's what is the title had given Pratyan. we say that sales mastery is life mastery i wanted to know whether do you agree with that Oh, totally. In fact, uh, without sales in life also, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, to sell your entire vision. Uh, for example, in 2020, I quit my job at Hindustan Times to start Ignited Minds Consulting. Parents were very afraid because, you know, well-set career, a well-set profile, a well-set brand, and you're wanting to plunge into something which is unknown. But the entire idea is to sell them the vision and saying that, okay, what is that you would want to do in your life? In your lifespan, a lot of people chase of being successful. I like chasing being happy. Uh, you may have crores of money, but if you're not happy, the crores of money is of no use. I'm not against making money. Definitely you need to make your money because otherwise things will not happen. But being happy is more important than being successful. And for me, uh, selling, that, uh, selling that vision of how can I influence entrepreneurs, how can I help SME entrepreneurs find their mojo and come back uh, to a life track played a very big role because in the year 2020 we all knew that how COVID came to the party and wrecked our entire lives and it's during that lifespan during that time I could utilize uh, this time and help more entrepreneurs come out of the vicious circle uh, do sales webinars and help them to understand okay how do I do sales in this Google times which is very volatile very uncertain very complex and ambiguous we never knew that when was COVID going to end so I feel that in the uh, pursuit of sales, sales as a life mastery plays a big role because uh, the entrepreneur was selling uh, the entire time saying to his employees, like, don't worry, we will bounce back. 
you may have to take a salary cut now we may have to you know withhold some people but again if you can't communicate this vision of saying that we will bounce back why will the employees stand with you why will the customers stand with you so i feel that it is not only sales is not related only to transactions which we make but it is also an ability of transforming lives and that is a very essential thing if an entrepreneur or a leader understands the skill his team is ready to fight the unknown absolutely prashant you you said it very rightly because ultimately uh, a, a leader has to uh, not only talk it but he actually has to act his way out because people listen not what they say what the leaders say but they follow what the leader does very very well said prashant you would you would uh, concur with me that the most important sale and the most difficult sale for any human being is to sell to himself first so how much do you concur with that that the most important sale and the most difficult sale is to sell to your own self yes. so your comment on that i think the first sale happens here you know then it actually happens in a real real prism so it's very important uh, to understand the science of sales you know uh, we've been taught the power of visualization so before any sale happens uh, i used to visualize as if the sale is happening i'm you know transacting the purchase order i'm getting my checks out that helps you to become more confident because when you enter a sales arena it's like a bull fight yeah. or it's like a boxing ring you do not know you may plan the best but when you enter the ring and when you are knocked out with the first objection that is when your plan is really going to come out true or what is your true skill out so it's very important to prepare plan and visualize your wins first before you actually go and do a physical meeting so i feel uh, winning here and winning inside with your own self matters a lot uh, when i was uh, you know looking to start my consulting firm uh, i had spent around 18 months of prep time to understand should i really take this jump and i had my co-founder where we did a lot of pro bono workshops to understand of how to make things happen and what we could do in a very dynamic arena to make things happen absolutely in fact i just and you i request all the people in the audience to uh, please uh, mute yourself i'll do one thing i'll mute everybody but in the meanwhile i request uh, uh, prashant to unmute yourself and i request everybody else to keep 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 yourself muted maybe we'll open up the dais for uh, open questions subsequently but in the meanwhile I request you to keep yourself muted uh prashant uh, we were discussing about this topic vuka world and then you came out with that beautiful uh, transition which is happening right now of uh, this world becoming brittle becoming becoming anxious becoming becoming incomprehensible and uh, and non linear you know you talked about uh, bani so i would like you to just uh, uh, enlighten or educate the audience about this uh, further transition of this vuka world into a world which is uh, bani so and i really like that concept and i've already shared in the last one week with number of uh, my friends my association my own companies and departments yeah i would like your take on that see i think the vuka world was in the era of the 80s 90s where you know uh, things were very volatile uh, till right up till let's say the covid time and during the covid is when this transition of the world from a vuka world to a pani world has started uh, coming in a uh, pre covid we were things were very volatile now it has become very brittle so uh, the entire idea is we do not know when relationships fail we do not know when your customer relationships fail it could be one of the smallest issue and you will lose your customer so the customer's tenacity of patience has gone down a lot uh, your supply chain vendors again earlier if they were waiting for a 60 day period or a 90 day period of your payments and now you delay a payment by even one day uh, tempers will start fraying up because everyone has become more anxious earlier it was in an uncertain world what is going to come now now very anxious saying that okay if i have made a sale will i get my payments back or will my customers pay me so uh, anxiety levels have gone up today your employees are in under a lot of serious stress and anxiety they do not know whether they will get their variable bonus they do not go they do not know whether they will get their next month salary uh, you look at all the tech giants and they are having a, a huge cash pile but still they have let down you know let go people they have rejigged the entire organization structure and it has become non linear so today if you look at uh, we are not able to forecast okay what is going to happen 
uh, there is a Russia Ukraine war happening and we would see an impact in India. And last but not the least, it has become incomprehensible. Uh, 15 days back, we had an incident where uh, spy balloons were being, fought, were being found in US. And now there is a simmering tension happening over Taiwan because the semiconductor industry is being controlled by that. So the world has become very incomprehensible, something happening thousands of miles away and we get affected. Now, this concept was created by uh, Jamias Kaskio, who's an American anthropologist, an author, and a futurist. And he strongly believes that the entire fulcrum has already started shifting. And the new world is going to be this, and you have to deal with it. We can't escape. So you're not mute, I think. The world has become highly brittle. And their anxiety level at all levels have gone up. And it's no longer linear. It's absolutely non-linear. And again, it's become very incomprehensible. Uh, I think this is a very, very important because, because as a as a hands-on entrepreneur and also as a trainer, I'm actually experiencing this, uh, Prashant, uh, especially post-COVID. There's so much of un uh, uncertainty has led to brittleness. If, as you already said, even in business relationship, your customer no longer is going to be with you just because of your relationship. He's going to see whether you are adding value, giving more for less. And understand that particular thing is there. Today, we are living in a very brittle environment. And anxiety is at a, at a very high level where a lot of stress level is there. And plus, it's a very non-linear. You know, earlier, we could expect that okay, there's some, some element of certainty. But now, suddenly, it's, it's, it's always a up and down, uh, you know, peaks and troughs. And plus, it is very incomprehensible. You never know what's going to hit you because of the space at which the technology is growing, the information age is going, and plus the competition is growing. We are living in a global village. So very well formulated, in fact, VUCA world transcending to Bani world. And we all need to be prepared for it. Prashant, you touched upon a very important aspect of leadership. So how do you define leadership and what qualities does uh, resonate with you about a good leader? Uh, I think a good leader is uh, responsible for all the bad things which the team does. You know, you need to take ownership of it. And when the team succeeds, you need to bask them in glory. And uh, my role model has been Dr. A.P. Abdul Kalam. And one of his first instances is when the uh, satellite failed and uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai took ownership of it. I think uh, for me, that had a very deep impact. And whenever I've led teams, I've always told them that you do not need to worry. If something goes wrong, I'm there to get your back up. And if something goes right, I think as a team, we have all succeeded. So I think uh, owning failures, I feel, is the most important uh, you know, leadership dimension. And the second leader where I get impressed a lot is Mahindra Singh Dhoni. Uh, you've always seen that uh, in none of the places he would you know, hog the limelight. He would take the cup, give it to his teammates and be there uh, behind and enjoying with his teammates. I think sharing and collaboration uh, is going to be very important in the new world of the Bani world where leadership is going to play a big role because uh, our job is to show them uh, the VUCA-ness and show them the vision. So reduce the volatility, uh, give your team the vision of where this organization is going to go or where this mission is going to lead. And I think that plays a very big role in the leadership dimension. Absolutely. In fact, uh, very well said, Prashant, in today's... Uh competitive uh, VUCA world to Bani world. I think uh, I for one believe that that organization is safe who can produce real resourceful and powerful leaders. How fast you can uh, you, how fast you can develop new leaders, how much of a leadership culture you have I think is going to be the real cutting edge in terms of uh, keeping an organization competitive. Uh, what's your take on that Prashant? I think I would uh, define there are four requirements uh, in this in this new, I would tell you, we are still in a fluid state. We have not hit a particular state. We are still in a very dynamic flux state. I think four important key requirements uh, for any person or any leader, uh, one would be to have an adaptive and growth mindset. Uh, if you look at the language of performance management system is also changed. Earlier, we used to measure performance. Today, now we are measuring growth. Uh, because in a startup ecosystem, earlier we had valuations, now they're looking at sustainability. The second element, which is very important, is ability to work under pressure. 
Now, pressure would come from varied angles. It could be from family, it could be from your environment, it could be from your peers, it could be from your boss, it could be from the customers. So ability to work under pressure and deliver the code is going to be the second most key element, which is very essential. Third is your strong communication skills. Uh, you may be a CFO, you may be a CTO, you may be in uh, production. Your communication skills needs to be enhanced because if you cannot communicate and articulate the thoughts clearly, uh, mayhem is going to be unleashed. And fourth, but the most important thing, ability to collaborate. If you cannot collaborate with people, uh, it's no longer a one-man game. We need to work with different teams. Probably, probably we need to even work with our competitors. There has been cases where you will have to work and figure out a way of how do we coexist. It's no longer about a rat race and cutthroat competition because you will have to figure out a way of how can you collaborate. It could be the same supply chain guy who's supplying to you and also to your competitor. How do you build the gap? How do you build those relationships where your collaborative skills is going to allow the entire ecosystem to flourish? Very well said. I, I love all the four points. You know, adaptive. Uh, second one is work in, uh, under pressure. Third one, we talked about uh, communication skill and last is the collaboration skill. Very well put in, uh, Prashant. And I think uh, today in the world, they talk about not IQ, not even EQ. They talk about AQ, that is adaptive, adaptive quotient. And uh, whichever organization, whichever individual is able to adapt to the situation and mold himself, I'm, I'm sure he's going to not only survive, but also going to thrive. Uh, Prashant, I want to ask you a take because ultimately you will appreciate that today everything is a team, team game. You know, you, your organization or your performance depends upon how strong is your team, how well lit is the team. So what is your take on how to develop real productive, real dynamic, real vibrant teams? I think the first and the foremost important uh, when you're working with a large team or even a small team is to know your leaders. So know your team and know what are they, what do they like? Where do, what, what is your vision of an ideal holiday? What are the goals they are chasing? Because if your goals of your team, you are not aware, you as a leader will never be able to groom. Uh, I always feel a leader's job is to create more leaders, not create followers. And uh, you can only create a new leader only if you know what is he looking at, where is his passion or what is her goal in life? Uh, what is that thing you can add value to your team? And I think it is uh, about the ability to hold on each other in tough times. Uh, you will have good quarters, you will have bad quarters. Nothing is constant. So in the good quarters, bask. In the bad quarters, hold yourself together. And you know, always keep reminding the shared purpose. That why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, you may be working in a startup environment. You may be working in a corporate environment. You may be working in a military environment. Shared purpose plays a big role that why are you existing? Why are you getting up every day and doing what you're doing? The second important element is the learning agility. Uh, if you can teach to your team, you can also learn from your team. I have learned a lot from my team. Uh, when, I was, when I was running my consulting firm, I moved to Kerala. Uh, Kerala being a new uh, market, Malayalam was an important language skill. I had basic bare minimum Malayalam language. But to learn it and you know learn from your team, my team members taught me this. Uh, like saying that, sir, you're making an error in the pronunciation. This is how you should be putting. And uh, that is very important. The third element is your self-awareness. So if you have to contribute to your team, you need to be self-aware of your strength and weakness. Uh, you cannot come into a team saying that I know it all. I'm the boss. I'm going to tell you how to listen. That is not going to work at all. And last but not the least, as a leader, it is your confidence in your team that the team will automatically win no matter what. And that is going to help them believe in themselves because end of the day, sales or any business environment is the game of confidence. So if you're confident with your team that this team has got the capability to deliver automatically, the it's an infection. You know, confidence and uh, you know shakiness, both are very infectious. You have self-doubt, the self-doubt will spread among your team in no, in no time. But if you have confidence and your words and your actions align to that, your team starts feeling that comfort. And that is how the team, a good team is being created because you need to back them up. Absolutely. In fact, uh, you said it very rightly. Ultimately, your team is a, uh, is a lengthened shadow of uh, the leader. And uh, we have seen time and again, be it in the corporate, be it in the 
in the in the political field or be it in the in, in nations a good leader can really inspire and turn it around uh prashant i want to ask you this because we are talking about resourcefulness uh have you come out with any strategy for making your team resourceful again in the in the vuka world if you want to make people resourceful uh, one is replace volatility with vision uh so you know uh, one has to reduce their volatility show them the vision of what can happen uh it is very wrong you know they always say that what is going to happen in the next 5 years we can't predict but you need to have a broad based vision of how your life is going to unfold replace uncertainty with understanding so you know you need to you need to understand your team uh, your team needs to understand why the organization is has to go through a has, has to go through salary cuts or you know your variable pay is not getting released or your promotions are not happening so you need to create an understanding environment third is replace complexity with clarity so if you are not clear from your management of what is expected out uh, please go with the extra mile and seek clarity the moment you have got clarity please ensure that the last man in the team knows that uh, is why we are doing what we are doing fourth uh, replace ambiguity with agility now honestly speaking uh, we are not we are not astrologers to predict what is going to happen we are not astronomers but what we can do is if we are agile in our actions we will have faster sprints so fast fail and fast succeed is going to be the mantra because whatever plans you make it is not going to it is not going to see the first quarter and if you need to really be agile keep start winning those quarters so break down those large goals into smaller goals and i would always tell try owning up every day because victory is there victory is not going to happen at end of a quarter victory is going to happen every day and your team needs to understand that saying that okay how do i you know work together and make this thing possible absolutely i love the word own every day you know ultimately cherish your life moment to moment as you call it as and that makes a lot of difference and uh, i love this uh, this particular connection you know change your volatility to vision your uncertainty to understanding complexity to clarity and uh, uh ambiguity to agility i think uh, very well said i think these are all learnable skills and all that we one person needs to do is consciously work on him on himself uh, continuously prashant i wanted to share with you, i wanted to ask you your your take on this they always say you talked about confidence you talked about self doubt uh it has been said in the behavioral science and this recent research that a human being achieves proportional to the self concept that he has about himself your take on this you know how important is a self concept uh, i would say in terms of his confidence his competence his clarity and so on so forth so your take on the on the distinction or the principle called as self concept uh you know confidence comes mainly from the ability of what you keep speaking to yourself yes uh, you know in the in the 24 hours we spent the maximum amount of time you are actually speaking to your own self uh, even when you're sitting in meetings when you're traveling there is a constant chatter which keeps happening now what is the content what is that you're speaking to yourself are you speaking uh, so i always tell myself uh, prashant do not uh, no do not feed your self doubt keep feeding your self belief now the self belief will happen when you have got a structured framework for yourself uh, so you could have a gratitude journal you could have a morning affirmation you could have something which acts like anchor points because during the day you are going to keep getting waves after wave of uncertainty there could be a pressure from somebody there is a pressure from your investor pressure from a startup to raise funds so how do you keep navigating is through these anchors and the self talk the self talk has got a clear example of increasing your self confidence for example if you're continuously speaking that you're not a good person and you're not fit for you know whatever you're doing you are born lucky you're not you're unhappy you've not got the share of luck or fate you need to have automatically the entire day is going to be you know attracting all the elements of coming in uh, we all would have ex- we all would have experienced when we leave 5 minutes late for work or for a meeting and we pray that we should not get traffic and that is a day where you find every single guy is coming out with his vehicle out but the moment you step out and you pray to god thank god that i am only being late by 5 minutes but i'm sure that i'll reach on time and you automatically see the magic happening that you will always find less traffic believe me the traffic does not increase or that decrease depending on your time it is the framework of what you speak and what you vision and the entire game starts shifting there absolutely now very 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 well said and ultimately uh, i am a i am a big fan of affirmation and gratitude 
and you're right these simple tools work like magic and if you really want to live a very happy harmonious and successful life i think these are some of the simple tools uh, which needs to be thought right from the educational state now prashant i know that you are involved with a lot of students you are involved in developing the culture of entrepreneurship among the students right from their uh, undergraduate dates so i want to ask you how do you imbibe all these distinctions of uh, self confidence self acceptance self actualization uh, in the in the students because you would appreciate that uh, the educational system that is in prevalence right now in most of the universities across the world but more so in our country is very lopsided and uh, is really not effective in in making people employable so what do you feel is a way out of this particular challenge i think uh, be it students or be it working professionals i think seven things are going to really you know i found in my career that which has allowed me to survive the entire storm of uh, the buka times and the covid times and help me to succeed uh, one is your decision making skills you know you need to really master that a lot you need to own the decisions the positive ones the negative ones uh second is collaboration uh, in this world you cannot survive alone you need to collaborate with people with clients with customers with your faculties if you are a student third is adaptability so if you cannot adapt to the newer circumstances newer worlds newer requirements newer dimensions you are going to face a lot you cannot tell i was successful i am carrying 20 years experience that is not going to work because every day your life meter is reset at zero third is your ability to organize things you know you may have less resources you may not have a team you may have people who are working as volunteers but how do you help them and get the things organized to achieve the particular goal that is going to play a big role fifth is i would always put uh, you know customer centric focus now as a student your customer could be your faculty your customer could be your mentor or your customer could be your intern guy so you know you need to have a customer centric focus if you, if you are a student in the normal world it's very easy you we know who's our customer let's say you are a family person you, again your customer could be your wife husband mother father grandparents children so you need to have a customer centric focus sixth ability is self awareness i think uh, i would put a lot of emphasis on self awareness is, is because that is going to be the key element of of your strengths and weaknesses uh, you cannot understand of how do i keep building my strengths how do i reduce my weakness so being self aware is most important and the last and the and the, but not the least one the ability to define a clear vision now a lot of times as leaders uh, we get instructions or we get vision boards or we get a document saying that this is where my organization wants to be but your ability to define that vision to your team and to your customers and to your other stakeholders is going to play a very big role in this entire journey and as we as we said that the world is moving from buka to bani uh our attention span has got down a lot we have come to a world let's say 3 years back uh, we were watching a 10 minute or a 15 minute video now we prefer watching a 30 second reel and in the 30 seconds if the first 5 to 8 seconds is not interesting we just flip uh and that is our attention span so in this uh, very uh, brittle world these are the some seven key skills one needs to master uh, be it a student or a professional or an entrepreneur Uh, or a homemaker i always tell homemaker people lot of people come and tell my mother is a housewife i always tend to correct them saying your mother is a homemaker because if that person is not there your home is not going to function and if you look at all these seven skills is found in your mother and she's got this entire ability so i uh, for me in my life uh, i have learned a lot from my mom and uh, she's been my role model to understand how do i keep navigating things uh, the second person being my father because you know these are the two people who are like your pillars for your entire life absolutely very well said uh, prashant and i love all these seven points uh, and i feel that uh, hope all the students who are viewing this particular uh, sales mastery talk show uh, are able to take a notes of this because uh, remember a blunt pencil is better than a sharp memory so remember decision making collaboration adaptability organizing your resources customer centricity self awareness and ability to have a clear vision are very very important and uh, these are all the pointers 
And these are all the cues which you need to work on in order to ensure that you're able to unleash your potential. Uh, Prashant, you know, my first book which I wrote was called Unleash Your, your Potential. And while I, while I was doing a research on this, I found out that uh, even Albert Einstein used only about 3.6% of his inner end potential. So I want to ask you as a trainer, coach, mentor, par excellence, how do you feel human beings can unleash their potential? Or, and even I would like you to take a take on what stops them from unleashing their potential. I think, uh, you know, we as people uh, in, the, in the social world, if I may say, we listen to our peers, we listen to our friends who again know you a very little. So they only see one side of your life. And we take those feedbacks very seriously. Uh, when I entered into the consulting world, a lot of my friends said that you are making a big blunder because you're working with Hindustan Times at a very respectable position. Uh, you're well set. But if you cannot go and adapt, and if you cannot go and deliver what you want, uh, you're going to make a mistake. Three months into the business, uh, from a positive 65 lakhs, I was negative 56 lakhs. All the customer checks started bouncing and the darkest fear came out to be true. Because what they said was right, saying that, you know, why do you want to play with your life? But I always felt that when I die, you know, when you're on the deathbed, you shouldn't die with regrets in your life. You should die with achievements of failing miserably. And that failing story could fuel up into something bigger. And that I feel is the most essential part of our entire journey towards life. And holding this is, you know, when you die, you're not going to carry any of the wealth which you've created here. You're not going to carry your home, your wonderful cars, bikes, your properties up. All you're going to carry is memories. And when you meet your creator, I think he should feel happy of meeting you, not the reverse, because uh, everyone has got a certain purpose of a life. The only thing is we are not able to find and discover that immense potential. Each individual which is born in this world has got immense potential. The only thing which stops him is his own self uh, doubts, which he keeps feeding. And once everyone starts you know, improving their self-belief, the game is going to shift for each one of us. Absolutely. In fact, that's why you know I totally agree with this concept that human beings are not resources. Human beings are possibilities. They've got infinite potential. It needs to be unleashed and thereby making this world a much better place. Prashant, you know, we have been talking about it. We both are involved in uh, educating entrepreneurs. We are also involved in uh, trying to create a mindset of possibility among the youth. I want to ask you this because this has been one of the subjects which I've been working on is about the concept called as mistake. And, uh, and as you rightly said, uh, at the student's level, they need to understand that Mistakes are not bad. But unfortunately, again, the, our educational system punishes when you make a mistake. And because of which, again, people are ensconced into their comfort zone and thereby are not able to unleash their potential. So I want your take on this distinction mistakes and how important it is. You know, as you rightly said, you left your cushy job, went into entrepreneurship. From 65 lakh plus, you went down to minus 56. People said, hey, kya bada galti kar diya. But oh, galti nahi tha, right? The, I'm, I'm sure that mistake is what made, it, made you the person you are today. So your comment on that, Prashant. Mm, uh, picking up from that thing, you know, mistakes. Uh, so uh, during that phase, uh, there was a video of Mahindra Singh Dhoni, where he says that what does not kill you makes you stronger. Uh, so losing that 56 lakhs actually was, I always consider as a blessing in disguise because it made me go and explore things which I would have never done. Uh, you always heard that, you know, sucks, uh, growth uh, happens on your, uh, does not happen in your comfort zone. This is, we've all learned from a childhood. Now I've added a definition to it saying that growth does not happen to your, in your comfort zone, but it happens in your effort zone. So how much efforts are you going to put on an everyday basis to reach towards your goal? You have to make progress of only 1% each day. You don't need to make 100% growth. doesn't work. 1%. What can I improve today? Uh, the question of how can we construct this and how can we build back is the ability to bounce back more stronger. Uh, the ability to, you know, hold yourself and prove that, uh, prove not to the world, but to yourself. 
our focus is to be on improving ourselves not proving saying that my friends were wrong today also i hold them saying that yes you were right i have made a mistake but give me one successful person in the world who has uh, you know become successful without uh, without enduring failure or without making mistakes in his life we would have zero people even gods have made mistakes so we are in the way we are humans so we are allowed to go and make mistakes uh, making mistakes and not learning from it is a blunder making mistakes is absolutely fine you need to do mistakes otherwise what is the fun of living this life uh, my mom used to always tell me you know she is a school teacher so she used to teach and during these tough times we used to have our morning uh, coffee breaks being a time ram the morning coffees were very interesting and one of the days she showed me a sharp pencil and she asked me what do you learn out of this i said it's a sharp pencil and it's it's looking very nice it's sharper and uh, seeing that it's looking very attractive and she had a very different analogy and she picked up another pencil which was blunt and nib was broken uh, the rubber was worn out so she said what do you make out of this and she i said no it's not looking good uh, because it's not attractive and that is one of the big learning lessons which she gave me is looking sharper means you have not been utilized and looking blunt being broken nib being broken worn out you may be in your bad shape that means you have gone and tested the waters uh, those scars actually indicate that you have survived the storm so if you are in a good shape not you know looking very sharp not doing things that means you have not gone and explored your potential you have not gone and lived the life which you have always desired for and for me that became like a turning point because it started giving me enough confidence to go back and explore what i really wanted to do in life awesome awesome in fact uh... a corollary to this question uh, prashant was this you know today you and i as trainers teachers mentors know fear is the biggest stop on people if you ask me whenever they want to go from a comfort zone to creative zone or as you said effort zone what you require is that uh, ability to face the fear and go beyond mm-hmm. so i want your take and your advice especially for the youth who are watching this as how do you how have you faced fear in your life see i am i face fears on an everyday pers- uh, everyday basis the only thing is that i do not carry the fear with me so it's like you know you need to become limitless you know that okay you have survived the storm and uh, your spiritual alignment plays a big role so for me uh, my spiritual portion has allowed me to conquer those dark days Uh, where you know you are not sure of what is going to happen tomorrow, but if when you are spiritually aligned and you know your self talk is more stronger, uh, you need to read a lot. So during the COVID period, I utilized every bit of time to read. Uh, I read around hundred plus books because you had nothing to do. So instead of whining and crying over what is not going to happen, I said, "What can I do differently in this time?" For me to remember is saying that during the COVID, I I attempted and made most of my day. and uh, that's what you should be doing you have to face your fears you cannot run away from it it is like your shadow the only time your shadow is not being seen is when there is enough light and i always believe as my role model dr apj abdul kalam said his mission was to inspire a billion minds and ignite the immense potential through the light of knowledge i think that is the only key element of how can you upgrade yourself through the light of knowledge and remove the darkness out of your life yeah i can see that your uh, your organization is called ignited minds and uh, that is that is brilliant you know and you need to ignite their minds with light and as you rightly said fear is false evidence appearing real and dar ke aage jeet hai so when you face fear and go towards it that's a way and as you rightly put in uh, there is no substitute for facing the fear and being in action brilliant you touched upon an important point uh, which is very very close to my heart prashant that's about spiritualism right and uh, i am totally in concurrence with you that uh, a person who has a strong spiritual mooring will be able to face any of the challenges in the world prashant how important is meditation for the human beings in general and how important is this for the youth to learn this technology called as meditation you know in a in today's social world where attention span is very low uh, meditation plays a very big role in calming your mind i always call the mind is a monkey mind we get more than 1.2 trillion thoughts you know it it keeps bouncing so many things how do you make it calmer is only when you decide a calm state 
you are able to think better you are able to make informed decisions you are able to start thinking okay where is my life going to lead to and meditation plays a very big role uh, in fact i am a part of a one person club uh, it's a community of entrepreneurs diverse people students uh, homemakers uh, every day in the morning five we meet and this is 365 days Uh, so our trainer used to always tell that you know no matter where you are if you cannot hold on to the vision on an everyday basis and wake up at five and be there if you cannot do that one hour thing for your own self what is that you want to achieve in life and the first and foremost thing what we do is we do meditation and we do group meditation because you know it helps everyone to become aligned because every day in the morning uh, you know when we wake up there is something someone waiting for us to learn and teach something. and for me that plays a big role because uh, you know he is a very silent person does not wants to be seen and he always tells i don't need to be the brand my work has to become the brand and for me that touched a lot because uh, you know we have met worked with a lot of trainers motivation speakers and we are all trying to hog the limelight and here we have got people who do not want to be even seen he says that my work should work through you you are the going to be the carriers of this entire wisdom which you are building up and for me that played a big role because uh, that is where the consistency of meditation started happening i used to meditate earlier but i never had consistency but now every day morning 5 to 5 5 or 5 10 uh, meditation happens on a regular basis uh, we also do gratitude journal we write what we learned what is it one person improvement and the the club's name is one person club so you know the focus is only improving one person and honestly it's not that difficult task because entire day in the 24 hours if you cannot improve one thing or one person of your life uh, where are you going to lead in today's times how are you going to become more happier i would not use the word successful because again success has got a different parameter and prism for everyone but happiness if you ask happiness is a, a common terminology people understand happiness much beautiful than being successful absolutely in fact uh, uh, how how much i resonate with you in fact uh, uh prashant you know we also as i have shared with you we have a golden hour community i think number of members are here right now nair sir is there uh, my friend uh, uh, vinay is here you know uh, brinda is here you know i can see many of the community we also do the same thing i think uh, there is an upsurge of this particular uh, aspect of holistic well being as you rightly said and uh, in this what is more important is not the intensity but the consistency and as you rightly said that one person improvement every day at by the end of the 365 days leads to 365% times improvement now as it is said in the atomic habits by james clear book uh, which i think is a bible and which every youth should read and thereby understand the importance of these small small habits when done consistently can really transform your life very very well said and uh, as you rightly said meditation is the technology which our forefathers have given to the world and today the world has adopted it and it's high time that we are able to share this particular technology to as many people as possible so that uh, it can be a biggest you now i would say it can be one of the biggest uh, healer for beta buka world or beta bani world you now beat your volatility uncertainty complexity ambiguity or the brittleness you you have in life or the anxiety you have or the non non linearity of your life or the incomprehensiveness of the thing all these eight elements can be can be handled if you are if you understand the power of meditation which gives you the deep silence very very well said uh, uh, prashant we have almost uh, had this lovely 55 minutes conversation till now and we have covered so many topics and i really want to appreciate your candidness and your depth of knowledge which has come out very much uh, uh, in evidence in all your answers so i want to just uh, uh, let people go into the chat box if you want to ask any specific questions to prashant uh, i will uh, allow the last 5 minutes of this particular talk show for that uh, please go into the chat box and type uh what you if you have any query any particular question which you want uh, prashant or uh, if if you want to address it to me i'm also open to it so which we can just share or both of us can answer that question if you if you desire so please go to the chat box and please type any question that you have because today's topic is resourcefulness uh, to face the buka world uh, if you have anything concerning that question all the bit better but i would say on any area of uh, 
holistic well-being if you have any questions uh, we are we are we are here open to share our insights on that yeah am i right prashant yeah yeah open to all kind because, of questions uh, we got about five minutes left. I think this five minutes, we should give an opportunity to this uh, mm -hmm. core members who have come over here to uh, answer this question. Okay, uh, ask any question that they want. Okay, Prashant, I want to ask you. Let me, uh, waiting for, I'm waiting for any questions if it is coming. What is the legacy you would like to be known for? Of course, you are still young. You have a lot of life to leave. But uh, what you would you be uh, wanted to be known for? Or what is the legacy you want to leave in this world? So I think one word which uh, comes to my mind is being a catalyst. So if you could, uh, you know, be a catalyst and help people in achieving their dreams and goals, I think I would have done my job. So when I die, I at least I want people to know that I could play some small role somewhere being a catalyst because that plays a big role because when, you, when you're born for something and uh, some people are meant for doing some things, and again, I would put my credits to my role models. So Dr. A.P. Jabdul Kalam, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, they have led their life by not wanting to leave a legacy, but by doing things which has created a legacy. So my focus would be on helping people more. And if the things work, a legacy will get created. Oh, awesome. I, I, I love, love that word. You know what you said, to be a catalyst for transformation. I think that's uh, uh, that's what you're doing right now. Friends, I've got some lovely, uh, I've got uh, three people asking us question and um, I'm so happy. Amol, uh, again, our Golden Hour community member. Uh, he, uh, the, the question he has asked uh, is this, he, how to keep the team always self-motivated and responsible? Yeah. Yeah, Prashant? So I've got a very interesting analogy. You know, motivations like uh, it, it does not last beyond a day. It's like you have to take a bath. So you cannot, you have to take a bath every day. So motivation again is going to be through your actions where uh, you have to be motivated to motivate others. So as a leader, uh, I always put a uh, team is only as good as his general. The general is only as good as his team. So if you want a better team, become a better leader and give back to your team, uh, show them the path of, and you know, show them the light of future. And I think their motivation and their responsibility will automatically come. Responsibility again comes with freedom. So if you want your team to be responsible, give them a lot of freedom. Don't micromanage them. Don't sit on their heads if they've missed a number or if they've not done their telecalls or if they've not filed their daily sales reports. Be a little flexible and make them responsible saying, that, okay, if there is some uh, chin balling which will come in, you as a leader soak it up from your management and do not allow that to be passed on to your team. Your team will start becoming more responsible. Awesome. Very excellent answer. The second question was from Vinay. He says that when you took the risk of leaving a safe job, did you have a plan B ready with you? So for me, plan B was to make plan A succeed. So for me, I had a very clear vision saying that uh, I may have to navigate, I may have to take a different path, but helping more entrepreneurs uh, lead a very happy life, uh, helping them on the growth of trajectories, what I was very clear when I formed the company. And the company has pivoted a lot. And I strongly feel that it's going to pivot even more a lot because I have never said that the particular company, when it is born, it has to die in the same form. So idea is to help more people. Uh, it started with entrepreneurs. It could move to students. It could move to people. End of the day, uh, in this lifespan, if you're able to touch a few hundred lives, uh, I think we've done a job. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, third question is from Brinda. Brinda is talking about resourcefulness. She says, is it advisable to resourceful at all the times? See, if you're resourceful, what will happen is people will flock onto you. People will come, you know, they will want to be connected with you. If you're not resourceful, so I have found a lot of times where uh, when I'm investing in startups, sometimes startups do not cut the bill because as an evaluator, I have to find the right startups to get my investors the return of money. But a lot many times, what we also do is if I can't invest and I feel there is enough potential if there is a small pivot which can happen in the organization, and if the founders are open, I share this view, and I tell them, why don't you go and approach these particular set of people? So it is no longer that how much market share I am capturing. I'm not in the market share race. It's all about collaboration. And you know, this particular action helps the startup guy to pivot. And when the startup guy starts you know, seeing success, he comes comes back and thanks you saying that, okay, that advice which you gave me uh, has worked and that is what today we can be all about. Whatever little knowledge I have, if I'm able to share with people, more than happy because 
I also keep learning every day when this topic came in. Uh, I did my prep work uh, before coming and saying that, what do I come and speak? What do I give as the key pointers? So every single opportunity in life uh, for every obstacle which you can overcome is, is again resources. And if you're a resourceful person, I think the world will flock onto you. They would want resourceful people in your life. Like, yeah, in fact, as, yeah. you, as you have uh, been doing this, today's at 26th episode. I'm sure that all the other 25 episodes have also been highly resourceful because you are learning something which is not taught in the colleges or the universities. And no books can cover you, but when 25 people are coming and speaking their minds, it is a multiplication effect. Uh, collectively, they would have easily read more than 2,500 plus books. And that is what the knowledge you get. So being connected with you, being part of the golden hour has really helped many people. And I feel that's a more key element. You're spending this one hour time to again, be resourceful and help your audience connect and become better. My students are going to take a lot of benefit because you know, getting a session from you is always difficult. Now this particular session would have gone, uh, would have enlightened them something where they would go and visit the past episodes. I think that answers our question. Absolutely brilliant. In fact, brilliant answer. In fact, as you rightly said, resourcefulness is a skill. It's a it's a quality of a human being. As he evolves, he becomes more and more resourceful. And I think every human being should aspire for being resourceful at all times. Because when you are resourceful, you are making use of every resources which God has blessed us to productive to give us more. And you know, even when I talk about 10x, 10x means what? You 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 have the same resource because resources are limited, but resourcefulness is infinite. And as you rightly said, each human being friends, uh, I really want to acknowledge Prashant for taking out your time and sharing your insights, your valuable experience. Uh, with each one of us, I'm sure many of the hundreds of people who will watch this particular episode from, from our YouTube channel will really benefit. And I'm sure, as you rightly said, you are already on the way of becoming a catalyst for transformation. And this world requires uh, real champion coaches, champion educators, and champion mentors like you. Thank you and God bless uh, Prashant for uh, taking out your time and being here. Thank so, you, sir, for inviting me and helping me share with two, two words of wisdom. You know, without you, this opportunity would not have been possible. And uh, as I've learned from you a lot uh, to upskill my sales acumen and knowledge, uh, today sharing this platform with you is uh, it's like a blessing in disguise. And uh, as we transverse this journey further, let's hope and create more miracles for the world to unleash their immense potential. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for all those people who are watching us live on the Facebook and also who have uh, joined us on our Zoom platform. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a, such a lovely audience. Thank you for asking those very, very insightful questions and making this particular conversation a little more brighter, a little more colorful, a little more uh, profound. So thank you very much and God bless till we meet you again for our next episode of our sales mastery uh, chat box or talk show, wherein we will be getting such similar resourceful and dynamic champions to come and share their experiences, their expertise in order to become as uh, my friend Prashant Reddy says, catalyst of transformation. Thank you and God bless. See you again. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you, everybody.